This presentation will be about basically two parts and one minor plus if we have time to get to the uh, get there. Basically, the main part will be about uh, our modularity in Anaconda. Uh, and uh, the second smaller part will be uh, about what we what changes are in the Federal 33 in the Anaconda. It's not that really, oh, I will get to that. <laughs> it will be a lot better. <laughs> so something about me, I'm Jiří Konečný. Uh, you can call me Jirka, as most of you already do, because it's much easier to pronounce. And uh, the main point, uh, I'm working in a Red Hat. I I have my head here, and you know, no, it won't work. Uh, and uh, I'm working in Anaconda for my whole career in Red Hat, uh, which is five years now. Uh, and uh, the main contacts I want to give you here are these two, which is uh, Sharp Anaconda on Freenode IRC and Anaconda Devil List. Uh, mailing list. Uh, if you need anything about, if you if you have some suggestions on making how make it better, or uh, do you have some questions about uh, creating your add-on or anything, just ask us there. We are friendly people. We don't bite usually. Uh, so first. Uh, I had a presentation about uh, Anaconda uh, modularization and it was two years ago on DevConf. So if you weren't there, I will make a short introduction uh, about what it is. And if you were there, it will be uh, at least a reminder to freshen your memory. Uh, yeah. so. First, Anaconda modularization is not not uh, connected with Fedora modularis modularity modularization at all. Uh, by the way, this is a slide from, from Fedora Wiki, I think, or something like that, explaining the modularization. And I, it seems quite complicated. I guess we have much simpler state for that. Oh, so what's Anaconda modularization? What is it? Oh, basically, we are trying what we are trying to do, and what we already most of it, I would say, or at least a half of it, more than a half of it, already done, is basically to split a uh, monolith design, monolithic design we had before, to uh, which which were basically everything in one place. There were some kind of backend, but in the same same code structure. GUI does some logic uh, for a GUI, but also something which should be done in backend. And the text UI basically the same. It was more or less baked together. The problem is that you have hard time to change something and see the results of your change or what everything it should, uh, it could uh, modify or change the behavior, where, where it could uh, really change the behavior, which is not really, really good. And uh, we had a lot of problems with that. So to change it, so something like this, uh, which is basically to split parts of the Anaconda into uh, modules and modules are uh, single units which will control or which will basically give you API to control uh, view, state, uh, view state and everything about a feature set something. So it means time zone module will, for example, give you dates uh, and ability to set uh, time zone, NTP servers, and similar similar stuff, and so on. The interesting one is uh, here is, uh, 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 yeah, and basically all the modules will connect to each other by the bus, and they will provide stable API. 
which is in, which could be interesting for you if you are writing your add-on or, or something like that, because you will basically give the same set of possibilities we had. We have. Uh, we are no. We don't have any other way how to communicate with modules. Okay, you can always create some something like file which will give you some information somewhere, but you don't want to do that, and we are not doing that really. Uh, and all the modules have stable API and communicate with themselves. The same works for UI. Basically, the text UI, graphical UI, works just for has just logic for the UI, nothing else. And it will give all the data to the module, which will then execute what's necessary and provide results to the graphical or text user interface. Uh, what's interesting here is a boss. A boss is uh, one this is main module. I would say it's always there, and it's his main. Its main responsibility is to style up all the modules and uh, provide them kickstarts, for example, and uh, grab all tasks for the installation, execute the installation, and so on. It's basically some something like the main point which will manage all the all the work around which, which will manage all the modules and all everything uh, which is not specific to uh, one module I would say I hope it's understandable one thing we give ourselves uh, uh, as a rule basically as a goal is that we uh, would like to change uh, change everything without user noticing, without user, with, with no user, user visible changes, which basically means that we did plenty of that already. And if you are using Fedora, you may have, uh, like show, you may notice that uh, we moved, for example, password, uh, password root spoke and user spoke to the uh, to the uh, main hub, but uh, it's there. There was much, much more we already did without really, really no, no visible changes. Which was the goal: do not interrupt user user uh, workflow. And the reasons why why we wanted to do the modularization. So one main aspect I would say is the is the development and maintainability. As I said before, the original uh, original hierarchy structure or original structure of the Anaconda was uh, pretty spaghetti, really. It was uh, that some logic for some logic was done in the UI, some logic was done in the backend, backend and so on, and it was hard to spot where you should change stuff and but uh, we, we were doing a big, uh, bad, bad regressions thanks to the point that we weren't sure what this change will really, will really change in the behavior, uh, unfortunately. We were trying, because of that, we were trying to do as small changes as possible, uh, especially for RHEL. But for Fedora, we said to ourselves that we want, don't want to do that. Uh, the main reason why I'm telling this is uh, basically that uh, we are really trying to split the code parts to a, to a minimal units, which will have uh, only uh, one thing to do, which 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 they are they are created to do just one thing, ideally. And I think we made a great progress on that, uh, but you can look on the on the code base uh, if you need to create your add-on or anything and see yourself. Uh, another thing, which is also in the first first point, is uh, basically the maintainability. Uh, we've created a great test coverage for the new code. I think we have something like 70-80%, which before it was maybe, I don't know, 20, I guess. Uh, not sure, really. Uh, and that's not only useful that we won't break the existing use cases do, during our changes, 
but it's also a great speed up of the development. The problem with Anaconda is that when you create your, when you do your changes to test them, you have to create an updates image, provide the updates image to the virtual machine, someone, some basically upload it on some server or something like that. And then boot your virtual machine, test, test the use case, Great thing is testing the live DPD because you have to type your URL all the time you are rebooting, which is great. And uh, then basically test your changes. And if it's not, if it does, doesn't work, you have to do it again. And this is again and again and again. I'm usually have like three virtual machines testing three use cases on all at once. And because of that, we started with different approach basically we will create our code we will create tests uh, sorry for the noise we will create tests uh, before we will try this uh, code changes uh, bef uh, in in the virtual machine basically we are doing test driven development because in the anaconda point of view it's much faster it's much faster to create a test and just adapt your code to work on the test than to try the code in the virtual machines. And which also give us the side benefit uh, is the great test coverage. Yeah, uh, another thing which I already pointed, but it's really, really uh, one of the main points also is the stable API. We don't provide it yet, uh, but the most of the API we have is stable, but we don't want to uh, give you a word on that because we don't really uh, migrate it everything. So it could change because of some logic we don't see it. But it's not happening really, it's, it's very rare. And it's most of the time it's not uh, something that hard to manage, like to fix it, fix, uh, fix the stuff. Another point which is pretty, which could be pretty interesting for uh, some, I guess, organizations and mainly uh, other distributions who based on Fedora or even they don't have to base on Fedora, they just have to provide our, provide some code and use parts of the Anaconda, uh, is splitting UI from backend. Which, what it means that basically, thanks to the DBAS, you are able to write your own backend, which will communicate uh, your sorry, your own UI, which will communicate with our backend, and it could be even that you will uh, create your own modules as as add-ons uh, in the Anaconda point of view, and these will provide you logic which you need for your UI, which is missing in the original parts, or you will. Give, an, uh, give us uh, a file as a bug or tell us that you needed this feature. And if it's meaningful for us uh, to implement it, or it's easy to implement it, we will most probably won't uh, have a problem to do that. Uh, so the current states where we are right now, I will show a snippets of code, I hope, it will be a little bit, maybe a little bit more uh, for the advanced, like people who are familiar with this, with, with uh, how to write add-on in Anaconda. Sorry for that, but it's, I think it's the best uh, way how to show uh, what we achieved. So, uh, the current state of the modernization uh, is basically, main part is modules. And modules are split to two, uh, to two parts, I would say. One is interface, which will provide you the stable API. And it's really an interface in our code. We have just file, which will provide you interface. They can be inherited and so on and so on, but they don't have a code, really. And the second one is implementation. This is... Uh, a uh, screenshot of a code uh, of one of the interfaces. Uh, basically, we have the logic. Okay, there's the logic for connecting the signals. It has to be there. Sorry for that. But other than that, other than that, it's just you will look that there's create payload, which is really a DBus API uh, method, 
and uh, it takes payload type, which is string. And it gives you object path, which means a uh, path to another dbus object. And that's that's basically everything. And we are also uh, writing there, uh, writing there, possible values which are supported in this API. So that means that you will, when you are when you are trying to find well, how to do something, you just have to look on the interfaces. Most of the time, we are trying to. If there's something missing, some information or anything. Tell us, we will give it or create a pull request. That's even better. And uh, that's one of the benefits we are trying to give there, basically to be able to uh, to understand the code very quickly or understand the API very quickly. We want to use this this uh, these interfaces to generate our future documentation. That's the plan right now. So uh, we are trying to have it as uh, self explanation as possible. Another piece, uh, important piece of puzzle, uh, piece of puzzle here is uh, ta our tasks basically. Uh, what task is, is a small unit which should do just one transaction in the installation environment. And transaction is maybe not the correct word, but basically what it does is that, uh, uh, for example, I want to set specific date. Ah, okay, specific date is not the correct example because it's really easy, but everything which takes a little bit more time, for example, I want to install the NF package set. The payload uh, module will create a task and this task can be started by the by the and provide sorry and provide path to this task, and the task can be started and uh, basically read the status and everything uh, on the opposite uh, on, on on the dbus. Anything UI your your controller you will you will write or your own UI will basically pro get this this path to the task and can start the task and follow if the task uh, went uh, finished and uh, what's the return called, basically. Uh, I think this is a great improvement because it forces us to write the task to a separate, uh, separate, uh, sorry, separate uh, called, basically. When we want to do any logic which is a little bit compli more complicated, we have to create it. We should create a task, and we have to basically because uh, without the task, we would froze our Dbus API, which we don't want to. So the tasks are somehow must have uh, must have from our point of view. But on the other hand, it's also great uh, enhancement of our code or great great uh, important detail for the readability of the code because. From the most most of the time, you just need a uh, name of the task, and you know what is what is it doing, and you can run the task when you are ready to. Another in interesting point which we did already uh, is configuration files. Basically, before that, we had uh, the left side which were install classes. Install class was Python code, which will describe your product, your variant, which means uh, Fedora workstation have default uh, file system XFS, which is not true anymore, but it was. Uh, and and uh, it will it will give you default auto partitioning behavior and uh, set uh, how how the UI should look like. And similar stuff. This is great. It gives you great power, but on the other hand, it also gives you a way, a way more uh, ways how to break the code, how to how to use something from Anaconda, which is not uh, take it taken as uh, API from our side and similar. Also, it's hard to inst uh, in, uh, to have these. In the in, in the new solution, because where it should be, if it should be in the bus, then you, it has to be it has to communicate with all the modules, and it could be really really hard for users to to understand this. 
Uh, so we took that and basically drop it and created a configuration file. The configuration files are on basically three places, which is one is the default one, Second, second is uh, uh, basically uh, it's a configuration of uh, products and variants. By the way, product means Fedora RL, uh, for example, or CentOS Scientific Linux, and variants mean workstation, server, container, uh, well, etc. Anything. And the configuration files uh, are pretty. Easy to, yeah, and la, uh, last place, sorry, I forgot. The last place uh, which you can provide your con own configuration file in the installation environment and it will rewrite any other, it, it has the higher highest priority. So you can basically, if you are a geek who's, uh, who like to uh, change, tweak uh, installation environment and have its own installation image, you can provide this configuration file to just uh, change your default file system and use this ISO. No problem with that. It should work. Of course, uh, it's not tested uh, out of the, like, we are not testing each settings and all the combinations. There's like plenty of the combinations, so it could, there could be a bug, but it's basically supported. So if you have a bug there, uh, just file it on us. Uh, one interesting detail is uh, inheritance. Basically, uh, one of the benefit in the install classes was that uh, the Fedora Coro, not Coro, Fedora of Silverblue uh, inherit, inherit uh, Fedora uh, workstation, which me and change just some of the values. We have the same logic in the configuration files, but it's not in the Python solution, like really early inheritance, but you will set the base product and base variant. And it will provide, it will make like the uh, between step, which will load the configuration values from the defaults, then override them by the base product and base variant, and then uh, override them by, the, by, the, by your product and variant, which is, really pretty simple to understand and to use. Uh, it's much less uh, error prone than, than the install classes and it's pretty easy to modify. We Basically the ButterFS changed to switch to the, the default ButterFS. It was more or less one line in the configuration file. There were more stuff but it was more the fixing stuff. But the change like switching to something else, it was really, really, really pretty easy. And most of the, most of the, oh yeah, plenty of the last changes we did from the community, like still system-wide changes and self-contained changes, was really done by the change in the configuration file. Because most of the time they just want to change the default. They don't want to add something new. It's it's the minor, minor, uh, minor. Uh, Request. Uh, yeah. Another another interesting point is from the add-ons. We I think we improved and add-ons support a lot. However, because not all the modules are uh, yet uh, migrated, then uh, you can have a difficulty with it. But the plan is to give a module on the basically same level as the modules, uh, yeah, as the modules. So they will have the same power and same possibilities to, to modify your system or to read uh, things from, read, read stuff from the, from the modules. So the benefits are, of course, uh, stable API. One of the benefits, which could be pretty interesting for some people, is uh, you can use a language of your choice. We don't force you to use Python. It's just it, it's it, we, you just have to have support for uh, for Dbus, and that's everything. We don't care really if you are using our API, how you are using our API uh, from the point of view of your code. But on the other hand. I uh, don't really expect us to understand your code if you use something uh, like, I don't know, Scala or anything, uh, which we don't understand. 
Uh, and the last point, which is bo unfortunately, I would say Python only, but for the uh, really obvious reasons, is that you can use our tooling we are using in Anaconda, and we uh, specifically created a Python Python model. Basically, Python like the directory is in, with a bit in it. Uh, by is the Python module in in uh, uh, in Python, but basically uh, we are thinking about maybe a pack even packaging it. I'm not sure if that gives any sense, but uh, all the all the pieces of code which we are using and it could be interesting for add-ons, you are free to use. And it's, uh, for example, that you can uh, just use our storage uh, constant uh, to get proxy, uh, proxy for the dbus uh, object uh, uh, about, like behind it. And it's pretty, pretty useful and is helping us a lot of uh, it's helping items a lot, so you can simplify your workflow a lot with this. If there's something missing and it could be interesting to us, just tell us. And even if you don't know if it's interesting to us, because you don't have to know, we will tell you. <laughs> so, and now the interesting part, uh, what was already implemented? As you see, plenty of the modules were already uh, are already on the dbus. The only missing part is payload, and uh, it's partially partially in the on the dbus. So uh, I will I will go with the just just quickly by the list. Basically, you have the localization, so you can set keyboard and and your language uh, by the module. It's done. It's used already. You have the network, uh, Radic, Radic Bikidal from our team make, uh, made a great work there. And it's pretty, I would say it's really easy to use the module uh, when you take into account how complicated is the whole thing. Um, and yeah, one, one note about this, we are trying to be, to have minimal API, which means we don't want to implement something which won't be used. It doesn't mean that we won't provide you anything more. We are just requesting your, your, uh, your heads up, your need in, your info about what you are interesting to have, interested to have. We have, oh, we have even now like few uh, notes from our existing add-ons, which we are trying to, uh, trying to modify them to not break them basically when uh, we are doing the changes. Yeah, so the network, uh, then is the security, basically the out select, out config, sell Linux stuff, uh, services, uh, you are able to enable service, ins uh, enable service, stop service, start service, not sure, not sure really like you, are, you are able to start and stop service because it doesn't give much, much more, much sense, but it has minimal, uh, it has, Minimally, it has the API, which is provided by the Kickstart. Uh, then we have a storage, and I really, uh, really have to uh, have to give my respect to Wendy Ponsova, who did this work, because moving the storage in Anaconda to a module is a hero heroic task, really. Because, uh, as you know, uh, we have uh, custom configuration spoke, we have auto partitioning, and the logic is all everything in the, in the module. And the module is uh, created in a way that there are viewers. It has plenty of interfaces, basically. You, have to, you can use the interface just to change your FCOE. You have to create, uh, you have to, you, you will use interface just to use the council custom partition. You will use another interface for auto partitioning and so on and so on and so on. It's really nicely separated and it gives sense. Even for like looking uh, for the device tree, uh, what devices will be or how the partitioning will be, uh, will look like after the installation and similar stuff. 
there's plenty and plenty of code moved and reworked and it's working pretty great. We had a minimal amount of bugs, which I was pretty, serious, pretty surprised. Uh, when you take into account how, uh, how giant piece of code is this. So the storage is great, really. Uh, another one is time zone, set your date time, as I said before, NTP servers and so on. Uh, and another one is a subscription, which is uh, may, which is work uh, from uh, Martin Coleman from our team, and is mainly you are mainly it's it's a great great uh, great module which should be there which should have been there even like two years ago, but it wasn't, it's pretty new really, and it's mainly for RLs, so sorry about talking about this, about that too much, if if that's the case, but uh, Martin did a great work on that, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it, there, there have, there was a really big amount of iterations and tweaking to make it work. And finally, it's there. And uh, another one is user. So create your set your root password, root password uh, create user, and so on and so on. Uh, I don't have payload here, but it's for the reason. The reason is that I have a separate slide for that <laughs> because it's not really uh, basically the payload. I think is the module, or most of them is the module, was called, which was the biggest pain in like way how to change something and not writing, break something else. And we wanted to change it. So we've basically changed the whole way how it, uh, how it work. And this is more, more or less in the way how we want to have it, because it's, as you see, it's future plan. Uh, the right now, we just have implemented some kind of sort support, but it will change. Basically, before, it was uh, one file, I would say, for each payload, which means when you set, when you're installing core, uh, uh, not core, uh, sorry, silver blue, uh, you had RPM OS3 payload, and when you install, when we was installing uh, server, you had DNF payload. When you were installing live image, you have li you had live OS payload, and then even one special for live uh, live image from the kickstart. Uh, not live image before live uh, DVD. Sorry, the live DVD is live OS, and live image from the kickstart is uh, live image which kind of share code. And the problem is that basically the DNF payload uh, and all the payloads have to have take care of all the sources. And that's the biggest pain because there were shared code, like shared, not code, but shared environment with the J code. So what we did in the J code, we used in the, in the, in the, uh, in the code, in the DNF payload, basically, yeah, I think it was only the DNF payload. And the problem there was uh, that it's really hard to spot why it's behaved this way. And even then, you have something like you have a method and you have three ifs with explanation. If uh, J could mount it repository here, or if J could mount it repository here and stage two here, and it's great, really great to debug something like that. So, and you don't, you don't know why the day could do it, does it, uh, of course, or done it, sorry, uh, of course. So we, we uh, took a totally different approach and this is more, more or less really, uh, really an idea how to, how we want to work it, how we want to have it working, but uh, we don't know if it's, uh, if there won't be any, any uh, like modifications because could be we missed something. So basically there will be payloads as the main module, which you will contact. You will use it to create your own payload, 
and you will get it uh, as a debus path and then you have the payload and the payload have one to n sources and the source should be created by uh, something different from payload. So payloads will basically give you pro provide you a way. There should be the graph should be a little bit differently, I guess, because there should be something which will create the payload and something like the source creator. And the source creator will give you sources which you will basically attach to the payload. I hope it's not that complicated and somehow understandable, uh, but the logic is, as you see, not that trivial. Uh, basically, what we are trying to do is to move all the setting up the swords into a separate unit, separate uh, separate uh, part, which will which will basically payload will just tell all the sources to just set up and provide me paths where I where I have mount where what I can do what I can use to start the installation. And in the NFS ISO, uh, NFS ISO uh, source example, it will mount the source will mount the NFS, then look for the ISO, and if there is an ISO, it will mount the ISO and provide the path to the ISO, which is which could be really complicated because even we we support without the ISO with expanded uh, expanded install tree, so it could be like just like the NFS uh, NFS uh, directory. And so on, so, uh, so it could be really not transparent. And uh, all this mounting and stuff uh, is happening just in the directory specific for the given source. So they don't like fighting for the same directory as before. I hope it's, it's clear. So our other future plans for the modularization it's basically to weaken dependencies between modules. So we are thinking about uh, packaging uh, modules as a separate packages. Not sure if we go that way or uh, really or not, because it could be more or less another word for us if you, when no one asked for that. But if there will be any any uh, like uh, interest for that, we will look on that and we are thinking about it even now. So we will see. Another interesting piece of code will be dynamic sorting of installation tasks. Basically, when the installation starts, every module has a method which will provide you installation tasks. And uh, not you, but the boss. Basically, the boss give the uh, give all the modules information that the installation will start and collect all the tasks which have to be run uh, in the uh, to make the installation complete. Yeah, by the way, we want to support uh, we want to support payloads, multiple payloads, and they will will run sequentially. So you can you can use this design basically the same way that the installation tasks will be get, will be retrieved from all the payloads and run one by one uh, based on some priority or stages we don't know yet exactly how we will do this uh, and uh, another one is that we want to but we are not closing to that yet because we have to finish the modelization first but we want to create a web UI uh basically uh, built on the cockpit which will uh which will provide you easy way how to do a remote installation uh without any vns and vnc viewer or anything basically to provide you whole ui and uh we want to give you more possibilities for an add-on which was more or less already already uh set uh, we want to give, we want to give you a, sm if you need something, just tell us and we will add it. It's not that we are not, we are close to extending the IPI. It's just, we don't want to implement something which is not needed. Yeah. So now the second, and I have, as I expected, I have 10 minutes, uh, I mean, not even, yeah, 10 minutes. Uh, so the second part, which will be just a quick list, uh, about what you can expect 
on Fedora 33. It's not about modularization anymore because modularization is again uh, done in the backend and we are trying to not uh, really change visible stuff for the user. But this was, uh, this was changes, system-wide changes and self-contained changes basically to uh, or system wide, I think all of them. Ah, never mind. Uh, which were proposed by someone completely uh, else outside of our team, and just done in the Anaconda. So you will uh, you will uh, see the change behavior. That's the reason why I have it here. That you can expect it. Uh, this from Fedora 33. And we did not do like nothing. We did some work, but it was more or less uh, sanity testing and. It, there were some work. There were some work on on the on one of the changes. I I will I will tell you later. Uh, so the first part and most interesting one is the battery FS by default. It was a workstation a working group uh, work. Mainly, I have to uh, I have to give my respect my my gratitude. I guess. Not sure. It's hard if you. It, it depends on if you if you like or uh, don't like the battery FS. Uh, to Neil Gompa and Chris Murphy, I know there were more people who were working on this, but uh, these two are more most involved in the installer side. So I'm not telling like these are the only one who worked on this change. That's not true at all. And uh, basically. Uh, it was just one change in the configuration file and some fixes, of course. And uh, one a little bit older new is that you are basically able to boot directly from the battery of a sub volume. And it was uh, really a work of Neil Gomba who make a uh, who make a great amount of work and uh, pinging us and so on about making this happen. And um, the last thing, uh, the second one thing uh, about the storage is that there won't be any disk swap by default. You can create your disk swap still, but you have to do it manually in the custom partitioning or blivet GUI uh, in the installer. And uh, then you will also, the, the high um, hibernation will work for you if you create your swap. If you want, if you use just the auto partitioning, you will uh, get swap on ZRAM, uh, which is basically uh, there's a unit system. The unit we will generate uh, this swap uh, file on ZRAM uh, for you uh, from uh, Fedora 23. It works really good. I, I already used that on Fedora 22. I will, 32, sorry. I was uh, interested in how it works. Uh, and another one is uh, NTS support, which basically uh, protection of uh, protection of your uh, NTP communication from the man in the middle attack. It works on some secrets, uh, secrets and keys exchange. Not really. Uh, I don't really see the, into this, but uh, I have to uh, thank a lot to Miroslav Lichvas because he helped us a lot. Not even implement this feature, but also uh, enhance our uh, existing solution so we could like uh, remove plenty of lines. I don't know. Uh, one one file, even more, maybe the whole file of changes, and just switch to just simpler solution. Thanks to the fact that he pointed on uh, to us on this. So thanks a lot, thanks a lot for that. And the last part of this presentation, just the big one, is a little bit uh, marketing from my side because we've created uh, great libraries in the in the during the modularization progress process, and I would like to uh, make people to uh, make, but I would like to you tried it 
because it's a great solution for, for plenty of words. So basically, I will just quick, uh, make it quick. Dustbus is based on Python Dbus. We had a problem with the maintainer uh, because he's not responsive there. There's a plenty of uh, pull request a long, very long time without any reaction from him. So we've created something, uh, something new called Dustbus. It's just pure Python library to connect with Dbus with a lot of, lot of features. And I think it's much, much better than uh, and usable than, um, in, in many cases than Python Dbus. One of the main aspects was I think there's not possible to call asynchronous tasks in the Python DBAS or synchronous, not sure, one of these, uh, by, by like easily. So this is one of the main points, but there's plenty of more, even the interfaces are part of the DASBAS library that it, it supports it. Uh, you don't have to use the features, it's on you. It's pretty stable. Right now, we did a plenty of bug fixing or Wendy, Wendy is creator of this library from the, from the beginning. Uh, Vendula Ponsova, you can uh, find her on our IRC if you have any issues with the, with the library uh, file an issue on GitHub or ask her or in Bugzilla anywhere. Uh, she's really responsive. And the second one is SimpleLine. It's basically text UI from Anaconda. We extracted this uh, to a separate library. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm the maintainer there and it's, uh, finally LGPL three plus. I was able to make the change from GPL two because I don't think it's appropriate, uh, for this library. And it's finally released on PyPy. So if you want to create simple, uh, cons, simple, simple text UI for the line based devices, which means even the remote console then uh, then this is a great library for that. And that's all from my side. Uh, I provided a few links here with the contacts on us and also uh, our blog. So that's everything from me. I will look if there are some questions. Yeah, you can customize your defaults. Uh, yeah, Michelle is asking if uh, uh, they can customize the defaults without using a kickstart or automate testing uh, everything, automating everything. Yeah, you can. You can create your. Uh, you can. You can change uh, the defaults. The only drawback is that you have to get the file into the ISO. Which is not that problematic on Fedora, really. If you, especially if you, you, you can basically inject it there. But for real, it could be some problems with uh, basically signing the uh, signing the image or similar thing. So you have to take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lorax can can do that. It's more. It's it's not that it's not doable. It's more like licensing could be problem with the real. Yeah, uh, you can inject also the kickstart. I think that's supported even though we are not using it really. And I don't think we are not testing, but it should work. <laughs> when L, L9 branches, this will be all modular, I hope. Uh, you mean modular like a federal modularization or modular like, uh, like Anaconda modular, modularization? I guess the anaconda modularization. In that case, I hope so. We would really like to have. <laughs> we would really like to have all the modules on uh, the DBAS uh, by Fedora 34, but uh, uh, I guess there still won't be features like uh, the dynamics task sorting and so on because. Unfortunately, there were plenty of changes in the uh, in the Fedora, and uh, there was plenty of work in the RHEL right now for us. So we didn't have a time to work on that uh, uh, in I don't know few few last few months. 
Uh, so I hope we will get to that soon and we will finally finish the payload. I wouldn't expect to be able to get like the task sorting and everything. But even even without that, uh, uh, you will be able to make your add-on and communicate with the Dbus uh, with the Dbus API all, for all the functionality because all the modules will be there. Yeah, it should be modular on Dbus. With not not everything there, as I said, the task won't be there, the sorting and maybe the boss won't have all the functionality, but. All, all the modules should be there and working just in the modular way in Federal 34, I hope. I don't want to promise anything because, as I said, we are really swamped by all the work right now. Okay, I'm out of the time right now, so I will I will leave you, but thank you, thank you much, uh, thank you all for the listening, and I hope you like my presentation. If you have any uh, any questions, anything, uh, just uh, ping me here. I will be on some sessions or, or somewhere, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, bye.